Are you deciding if you want to take step one or step two now that step one is pass fail? In this guide, we'll talk about the pros and cons of taking either first and what you can do to maximize your chances of getting into residency. We'll start with three reasons that you might want to start with step two, followed by three reasons you might want to start with step one, and then end on my recommendations for what you can do to get the highest step two score possible. I'm Dr. Alec Palmerton. I went from having low scores and getting rejected from all of my top programs for college to scoring in the 99.9 .9 percentile at Stanford Medical School and using that to get into the Harvard MGH program for residency. I break down the best strategies from top performers so that anyone can get higher scores faster and maximize their productivity. Let's get started. So I wanna start by talking about the three reasons that you might wanna take step two first. So the first reason that you might wanna take step two first is given the fact that step two is now the, going to be the most important exam now that step one is pass fail. So before step one was the only exam that everyone would have taken by the time that they applied to residency. Because of that, it had an out sort of a disproportionate in importance in terms of their weight on their residency applications. Since that was the only one that everyone would see, that was the one that was required. Now that step one is pass fail, they still need a screen in order to weed through all of the thousands and thousands of applications that some programs get. As a consequence, they're going to need some sort of objective measure to compare people against each other. Now enter step two. So if you wanna get a really high step two score, it would stand to reason that you might wanna focus most of your time on that particular exam. The second reason that you might wanna start studying for step two first before step one is that it can give you sort of clinical context for some of the information that you're learning for step one. Now in step one, it can feel kind of complicated and kind of confusing if you've ever done any of the questions from step one because there'll be these sort of experimental questions that seem kind of out there. Like, oh, they designed this sort of transgenic mouse and now, you know, effect you expect if they make some sort of change in the genes of this mouse. Starting with step two can give you more of a clinical context for understanding the applications of these concepts that you're going to be learning for step one later. And so it can give you more of a familiarity and maybe more comfort with the concepts that you'll see later for step one if you start with step two first. The final reason that people usually will cite for whether you would start with step two over step one is it's for, particularly for those that are IMGs or people that have graduated and it's been a while since they've learned the basic sciences or maybe even they didn't learn the basic sciences to begin with. So oftentimes, like let's say that you're an IMG and you trained in a foreign country and you didn't really learn a lot of immunology or the biochemistry that you learned was really basic and it was like years and years ago, it will feel a lot more uncomfortable to study for step one. Consequently, it may be feeling a lot more comfortable to study for step two. And as a consequence, you may consider studying for step two first because those are the things that you're more likely to have seen in your day-to-day -day practice if you're a practicing physician, if you've gone through residency training, or if you've done any sort of meaningful clinical experience, is that you will have been working in a more clinical context, which happens to be more of the kinds of things that you'll see on step two rather than step one. So we just discussed three possible reasons that you might wanna take step two first, and now you may be wondering, why might I wanna take step one first? So next I'm gonna delve into three reasons why step one may be the better choice if you wanna get the highest step two score possible and get into the residency of your dreams. The first reason that you might wanna take step one first is actually because now that it's pass fail, it can be a really good sort of testing zone or training zone, if you will, in your preparations for step two. Since step two is so important, you might wanna consider taking step one first so that all the mistakes that you're going to make and all the sort of you know stumbles, you can make on a test that has lower stakes and you can save your, you know, the, the final test of step two as the one that's going to be the, the one where you're hopefully going to be at your peak. IMGs tend to have a much, much higher rate of failure and tend to have lower average scores than their USMD counterparts. So if you wanna maximize your step two score, step one can be a really good practice area so that you can maximize your scores on step two later because you can get sort of the kinks and get sort of the mistakes out of your system before you end up taking step two. The second reason that someone might wanna take step one first is actually sort of the opposite of what I was saying before in that 
if the information is really fresh for you, you probably would want to take step one first. This would be say like your second or maybe even your third year medical student who has just finished their basic sciences recently or you know less than a year ago. You'll feel more comfortable with the information to take step one first than you would if you were to say, say take step two first, because that information is going to be more fresh and more available in your brain. So the third reason that you might wanna take step one first is that the knowledge on step one actually isn't all that different than the knowledge on step two. So I know that this is gonna be controversial and there's gonna be a lot of people who disagree with me, but bear with me. So it is true that step one and step two have sort of different foci. Right, so step one tends to focus more on basic science and application of more foundational basic science concepts. Step two tends to be more clinically focused, has longer vignettes, and tends to be more about interpretation. Now, on the surface, they might seem like very, very, very different exams. What I can tell you though, is that in practice, how you do on one often will affect how you do on the other. Even subjects like say biochemistry or immunology that I was, after taking step one, I was like virtually certain that I would never see them again, surprisingly came back in kind of weird places on step two. The proportions are different, but you still see them. So for example, immunology. You'll see oftentimes immunodeficiencies on step two Again, not at the same proportion, maybe not quite as many questions as you might see on step one, but you'll still see them. And you'll often see them in places like pediatrics. Same thing with lysosomal storage diseases. I was certain that I would never see another question about lysosomal storage or glycogen storage diseases. But in reality, they came up again in step two, not in quite the same context. They wouldn't test me say on like the enzymes that were deficient, or if they did, it would be sort of at a, at a more superficial level, but you would still need to have that knowledge. And so if you really wanna maximize your step two score, you might consider taking step one first because if you spent the time really going deep and understanding the material, and especially as we'll talk about in a second, having a system so that once you learn it, you never forget it, having that foundation can be a really, really powerful way to get the highest step two score possible so that you can stand out in your residency applications and lay the foundation for a stronger clinical career in the future as a doctor. I wanna end on talking about my take. So we've talked about the three reasons that you might wanna take step two first, and then we talked about the three reasons that you might wanna take step one first. It all seems pretty reasonable, right? So how do you decide? How should someone, if you wanted to maximize your step two score and get your best foot forward for getting into the, the top choice residency, what would be the best way to prepare? And how would I do it if I had to go back from the beginning? So let me start by saying that ultimately, I don't think that the order matters as much as people think. What really matters is going to be the skills that you develop for one and the other, since ultimately what sets the top 1% versus the one, bottom 1% 1 apart for their performance and their scores is going to be the skills that they have and how it is that they use the resources. And so what I would suggest is, is that you go in with the mentality that you're trying to prepare for both of these exams simultaneously, and you just happen to take one versus the other first. Personally, I would probably take step one first because of everything I said before, it tends to be a good sort of practice grounds and proving grounds so that you can get some of the mistakes out of the way. And it tends to be a little bit simpler in terms of the interpretations. But ultimately, the way that I would think about this is that you're trying to learn one, how to understand and apply concepts. Since, since this is something that's pretty different for both how med schools in the United States tend to test things, as well as abroad, both medical schools and even some national exams. Two, probably the most critical skill is that you want to learn how to retain information better. So what you don't want is to have your preparations for step one just be for step one. And then now you, you're gonna pivot and completely you know, forget everything that you learned for step one and then study for step two. So we just discussed three reasons why you might wanna take step two first. And we discussed three reasons why you might wanna take step one first. If you're wondering now, what should I do? Cause I'm gonna have to make a decision which I'm going to take. What I wanna discuss next is what I would do if I were in that position to maximize my chances, not just of passing step one, but also having the best step two score so I can put my best foot forward and get into the dream residency of my choice. The thing that will set people apart isn't so much the knowledge that they have, but rather the skills that they've developed. And so what I wanna talk about is 
how you can study for step one and step two simultaneously in a way that you can shorten the overall time period in which you can study for both and get a higher score. We've worked with many students who have to take step one and step two over a relatively short period of time, including people who have to study for step one during their clerkships, or have to study for step one and then take step two pretty close afterwards because they've got a condensed timeline because they wanna match by a particular date and they're an IMG or they're a practicing physician somewhere else. The best way to do that is to actually consider that you're studying for both of those exams at the same time. So let me talk about how you might do that. The first is when you're studying, I probably would sort of plan on taking step one first. And the way that I would do that is try to learn the fundamental concepts of medicine well. Once you learn those concepts, you can then apply them. So those are, would be things like ischemia or inflammation or things like likes to solve likes or pressure differentials, concepts that you can then apply to understand the vast majority of what it is in medicine. So that would be the first thing that I would do is to try to understand and apply concepts at a fundamental level. The second thing, and this is probably the most important thing that I'll say if you're trying to, if you're trying to prepare for step one and step two simultaneously, is that you need to have a system of retention. Let me say that again. Once you've learned something, you want to never forget it. Because if you have the power of learning something well, right, so combine this with learning things conceptually, but combining the power of concepts with the power of having basically perfect recall by using a system like spaced repetition, probably the most important thing that I'll say is, is that you need to have a system, if you're trying to prepare for both step one and step two, which are massive exams in terms of the knowledge that you need, you wanna have a system so that once you learn it, you never forget it, and you can learn how to apply it. And so it's this final step that I'll talk about of learning how to apply it that is really the way that you'll learn how to study for step one and step two simultaneously. And that's that if you read the NBME question writer's guide, which you know we can link in the description, there is a massive amount of information that can be distilled into concepts. And those concepts can then be tested on the exam in many, many, many different ways. This is the entire point of what the NBME is doing when they're testing questions on step one or shelf exams or step two or even step three. And so they're trying to get you to interpret vignettes and learn how to apply this information conceptually. And so what you really need to be working on, especially if you wanna do well in step two, is from the very beginning, learn how to interpret questions well. This is easier said than done, but what I can say is, is that if I were to do this, I would probably start with step one because the interpretations tend to be a lot more straightforward. There's a lot of signal, which means like the information is there for a reason. Now, noise is what is introduced really with step two. And it's the idea that they're going to give you information that's going to kind of try to confuse you. <laughs> so to speak, right? Kind of muddy the water, make it a little bit less clear. And so ultimately the skill that you're going to want to build towards is the ability to read questions well and understand the purpose of every single sentence. And that's gonna start from day one when you're studying for step one. And hopefully you can build that skill all the way through step two so that when you get questions wrong, you're not missing questions on things that you know. To score high on these exams, the most important thing that you can do is to make sure that the questions that you have the knowledge for, you're getting right. And even if you don't have the knowledge for the questions or if you're not entirely sure, you can at least get it to 50-50. So the top scorers are those who are going to be able to make sure that they're not making unforced errors, and that's gonna be critical. In this video, we talked about the top three reasons to study for step two first, the top three reasons to study for step one first, and ultimately my recommendations for how you can think about it so that you can study for both simultaneously and reduce the amount of time total that you'll be studying for both exams and maximize your score for step two plus your chances for residency. So if you found this content valuable, please hit the like and the subscribe button below so that you can be updated anytime that we have new content that can help you take the strategies from the top 1% of test takers and apply them so that anyone can get higher scores in less time with more confidence. Thanks for watching.